so proud of me. It's so proud of me. Cage breaker. Cage breaker. All right. Cage breakers. We out here. This is the Cage Breaker Show. Not everybody's an athlete, but you can learn a lot from an athlete. And today I have a special guest, um, somebody who's truly uh, defeated the odds, you know, somebody who I, I truly admire, um, has purpose, very resilient, uh, very special young man today. And um, I'm, I'm really thankful and grateful to have him on the show. So with no further ado, we have Mr. Tyson Gilbert. How you doing? Good man, good. Uh, just like just like we were just talking about it a second ago, like I really appreciate what you're doing for for the state of Colorado and just and just the athletes there. And I'm 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 definitely excited to be on be on your show. Yeah, no doubt, man, no doubt. I'm I'm like I said, I'm 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 proud of you, and I appreciate you, and I'm excited to talk about you know you and your journey, and I'm sure the the, the listeners are gonna love this. So thank you. Um. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, I was born in born in Denver, Colorado. Um, was raised in Aurora up until about seventh grade, and then um, my family we moved out to, to Highlands Ranch, and then I went to high school out there. Uh, I went to Highlands Ranch for my first two years, and then I uh, I finished my last two years at Rock Canyon, and then um, yeah, just just always played sports, been been athletic and. Um, yeah, just just done that, just done those things, and then I uh, I had opportunity to go play basketball out of out of high school at um, CSU Pueblo, so I spent two years there, and now I'm uh, now I'm up in Alaska at University of Alaska Anchorage, um, playing up here. Mm, and we we gonna we gonna take it back. When was that moment that you knew you know you playing prep? Um, you at Highlands Ranch, you at Rock Canyon. Um, when was that moment that you knew, like, hey, this this game is gonna take me places? Yeah, I'd say I'd say the moment um, when I knew this game is gonna take me places is uh, probably probably like my saw going into my junior year of high school because um, that's when I that's when I really started to be like, okay, like I gotta I gotta make a decision, like, <laughs> do I do I really wanna do I really wanna do this? Do I really wanna to want to play college basketball. And once I figured that out, I feel like that's when I really started to, to buckle down on, on my game and just, just working on, working on my skills and my body and everything. And I'd say I, that's, that's probably where I took my, um, my biggest leap as a, as a basketball player was that uh sophomore to junior year summer um, started to play a lot more, play better. And, uh, Things started to open up a little bit for me, so I, I, I'd say sophomore to junior year summer it was really big for me. You talk about taking that leap. Um, in life, a lot of a lot of us are going to have to take leaps, whether it's sports or not. But for you, I want to know what went into that that leap and that separation, because like we talked about um, before the show started, you know, Colorado being overlooked and everything, especially yeah. you know with basketball. So it's like three times as hard. What yeah. went into this leap in this development? So I'd say um, for me, my my dad, he's he's been real instrumental in my in my growth as a basketball player. And one thing, like a lot of he's always talked about, and a lot of other coaches always have told me is like, being from Colorado, you can't you can't be cool. Like that's just that's the thing. Is Colorado cool? Like you can you just you just play cool, play 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 free, but you just gotta. As a as a kid from Colorado, you gotta you gotta work that much harder because you're already being overlooked. So that's one thing that I I've I've tried to um, especially then because I I mean I'm a kid I want to look I'm, I want to look good I want to I want to make all the pl uh, flashy plays but when it comes down to it um, you can't do that being from Colorado you gotta you gotta you gotta have something more so that's one thing I tried to pride myself on is is uh, just just working hard and and just not being cool like because. At the end of the day, the people who stay on the floor are the ones who we're gonna get the most. So that was that's the biggest thing for me. Mm, I want to give a shout out to your pops too. Shout out Coach Gilbert, <laughs> uh, a, a great man, a great man. And he said, you know, what was the quote again? Don't be cool. Don't you can't be you can't be too cool. Yeah, yeah. Being from Colorado, you can't be you can't be too cool because you are you already being overlooked. What did let's let's talk about that. I want to dissect that real quick. So, what does that look like for the people listening? 
because is it like you can't go out there and try to be cool and or is, what is it get get rebounds be gritty don't you just can't be cool because you're gonna get eaten alive really because you go somewhere else you're gonna get you're gonna get eaten like there's there's different places other than Colorado I think that's what uh what was what's what was tough for me to understand um because I mean like just just playing out here like you can be good but other kids are are better and they're they're doing stuff differently. So I'd say what that looks like is just just being gritty and just like who cares about what what you look like when you're when you're out there playing like like just play hard. You play hard. Mm, that's say that one more time, man. Because so many people want to be cool. So I get it now. So many people want to go out there and be cool and pull up and do Steph Curry and dribble and go through the legs, but. You want that grittiness because the best players have the grittiness. We might just see the highlights, but get out there, get some rebounds, dive on the floor, hustle. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Because at the end of the day, that's if you want to if you want to stay on the floor, that's how you're gonna stay on the floor. It's just just doing everything you can to 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 win this to win that possession, win the game, and and I think that's that's all it comes down to is just playing, just playing hard, just playing hard, and and not worrying about how you look like doing it. Facts. Facts. So we um we balling out, you know, for your starter. You 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 do amazing things, you're working your way up. Um then comes the opportunity to to play at the, the next level. Um mm-hmm. you go to CSU Pedlo. Talk to us about that leap and what, what it was like playing there. Yeah, so um yeah, going to going to Pueblo was 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 an awesome opportunity. They uh that was my first offer. Um it was like in July of my um junior year summer. Um and I was I was going to wait wait it out and and kind of see if I could if I could maybe get get some other looks or or maybe go a little bit higher, but at the end of the day like um it was a place where I felt that that they believed in in what I can do and and that's all I that's what all I really could ask for from a from a coach's staff. So I committed in um going into my uh like right before our, our senior year started, uh basketball season started. And then yeah, just going to the college game is different. Um it's different. It's, I mean, dudes are a lot bigger, faster, stronger, but um uh, like everything that you've been told to like to work on and and like little things that you've been you've been taught growing up, like it it shows if you if you don't put all that all that stuff in the forefront and I feel like I, I struggled at, at at the start because um, it was different like I just just wasn't ready wasn't ready for it to to start so but um but yeah <laughs> so you saying so you saying you struggled a bit you wasn't ready um at the start uh, what was what was the the biggest adjustment that you had to make yeah I'd say the biggest adjustment for me. Um, is really just working. It's just putting everything together. Like, put. I was good. I was always solid with, with my schoolwork. That was all good. But um, like, there's there's more you got to do. Like, getting extra shots in the gym. Um, maybe getting an extra lift in here and there when you when you don't want to lift. When you when your when your body's tired and 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 going to and you're sore and you got to go get treatment. Like, that's that's the toughest part because it's just there's a lot going on. It's college. You want to, you want to socialize, you want to have friends, you want to, you want to do all these different things. But at the end of the day, like you're, you're, you're on a basketball scholarship and that's, that's what it is. Like you're, you're there to get your school and your, and your basketball play and your, your school paid for and the, and to help, uh, help your program win games. So um, once I, once I started to figure that out, um, it, it became, it became a little better and I wasn't playing, I was playing, I was playing solid minutes, but it, like as a freshman, like as a bunch of freshmen go through, you play, you might play 20 minutes one game, and then you might play three minutes the next game. So just trying to balance that and just trying to stay ready for um for all those types of ups and downs was was tough, but it's it's all helps me so much in um in the long run. Talk about those those ups and downs, because you hit on some key points and I see it a lot, you know. I get the opportunity to go to many games. So when I'm out there watching, I see, you know, the, the the star freshman who comes in and they might play a lot this game and not play at all the next game. Talk to us about just 
the mindset that you have in those moments and the mindset that every young athlete dealing with it should have. Do you pout? Do you mm-hmm. complain? Do you quit? How <laughs> should you deal with those moments? Yeah, I mean, it was, it'd be really easy to to pout and complain and be like, dang, like, I know I should be, I know, I know I, I'm, I'm capable of, of coming in here and helping our team out right now. But at the same time, um, that's out of your control, you know? And the only thing you can control is just, is just your, your attitude towards your situation and, and your efforts. So that's, that's what I just, and that's why I come back to my, to my, my parents. I got a unbelievable support system. Cause I, I, I'd be feeling that I'm like, dang, like, I feel like I'm doing all the right things. I'm getting extra shots, but I'm like some, I'm just not, I'm just not in the game when I, when I feel like I, I, I have earned, but they just always are like, like, dude, like you just bring me back to bring me back down and be like, you're a freshman. Like, and you just gotta, you just gotta, you can't control that. All you can control is just how you come into practice every day with the, with the attitude of, of, of gratitude really. And just, and and being there for your teammates when maybe you're on the bench, but you just gotta you just gotta give attitude and effort every day. And and I mean, in my opinion, I think everything happens for a reason. So in the end, I feel like all the chips will fall in your favor if you're doing the right things. Mm, facts, facts. I, I totally agree with that, and I love the 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 emphasis on attitude and effort. Yeah. Controlling what you can control, it'll 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 take you a long way. Um, for sure. So, you know, shout out to you for dropping that jewel. So you at CSU, you at CSUP, um, mm-hmm. you, you balling out or not, you balling out. Well, I'll say you at CSUP, <laughs> yeah. you doing your thing, you know, you're, yep. there, you're learning um, when the opportunity comes, you balling out, mm-hmm. it's ups and downs. Talk to us about the most important lesson you learned during your time at CSUP. Yeah, most important lesson I've learned, Ben. Um, yeah, I'd say most important lesson lesson I've learned, especially at CSUP, was just taking just taking care of yourself, just taking care of of your body, um, your 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 mind. That's the biggest thing is just taking care of your mind. Because I mean, as a college student, you're you're 19 and you're leaving home for the first time, so. Um, just taking care of, just taking care of your body, like putting all the right foods and everything in, in you. And, and yeah, just, just doing that. Cause I mean, I was, I was at the, I was at the calf just eating whatever thinking I was good. And then we got practice 30 minutes later and I'm not feeling right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that was, that was tough. And then like getting treatment, that's the biggest thing because it's a, like when, when you get to the thick of, into the thick of the season, like it's a grind, like it is a grind, especially with, um, being in the RMAC and cause every, every trip was a, was a bus trip and we played back to back Friday, Saturday. Um, so you had to, you had to make sure that you were getting the right amount of sh- sleep and that you're, you were getting your body, your body good to go. Cause that's, that's, that's some grueling stuff right there. So that's what I'd say was my, my biggest lesson I learned was, um, just, just taking care of myself, just taking care of my, taking care of my body and, and just everything. I want to, I want to, I want to title that. I want to call that the extra, mm. doing the extra. Doing the um, extra, yeah, for sure. A, a coach at, um, she's a, she coaches at San Jose State right now. Her name is Ari Weidman. Mm-hmm. She, she talked to me about, um, she was on here and she spoke about the unrequired, you know, doing oh. unrequired, everything you just said. Um, but for this one, we'll call that, you know, the unrequired, we'll call that the extra. Yeah. Like How that. important is doing the extra um, practices over? How important is it to get treatment, um, yeah. you know, go get tutoring in a class you're struggling, eating right? The stuff that people don't want to do, but mm-hmm. it's important. How how important is that? Extremely important. I mean, when it comes down to it, that's the that's the difference between I mean, just talking personally, like that's that's the difference between maybe you taking your minutes from say you're playing like 15 minutes a game, taking that from 15 to like 20, 22, like maybe like as a team, as a, as a whole team, like if your whole team gets on that same, that, that same wave, that, that may take your, your win total from maybe 
15 games and maybe like 18 to 22 games. Like it's all, it all, it all builds up. Everything adds up. So like just staying after practice, like getting extra shots in, I mean, it all helps, you know, it, it all helps. And, and I, at times like you don't want to do it. Like my coach right now, he always talks about like, there's not like at times I don't want to, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like always like coming in early and, and, and working as, as hard as I do, but I, that's just something that I got to do for our organization to be successful. And I, I really, I really respect how, how he works. And, and then I feel like that's just like a, a domino effect. So it's, it's really big, just taking care of just, just doing, doing the extra stuff. It all, it all adds up and it, it all helps for sure. That's dope. Shout out to coach. Yeah, no, yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, for real, for real. Um, so moving forward, you know, you at USCSU Pablo mm -hmm. again, like I said, yeah, learning a lot and everything like that. Talk to us about going from there to Alaska. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, after my sophomore year, I had a, I had a, I made a pretty, pretty solid leap from my freshman to sophomore year. Um, I like up to my, up my scoring totals, my, a lot of my averages. And yeah, it was just a overall better year for me um, personally. Um, and then we, so that was after my freshman year, we had a new coaching staff come in. Um, and then, you know, that always, that always changes some things. Um, so after the season, I, I decided I want to, I wanted to, to, to go somewhere else and, and do something different. And uh, I put my name into the, the transfer portal and literally like the, I want to say it, it was either the, the next day or the day of I put my name in um, the pandemic started. <laughs> so uh, that all, that all happened. So I'm just, I'm getting phone calls and I'm, I'm doing Zoom calls with coaches that I've never, never met before. Like we're doing like virtual visits. It was just like, it was some, some crazy, some crazy stuff. But um, yeah, so Alaska Anchorage, they, they called me and then um, they offered me and they just kept, they just kept growing a, a relationship with me. And I felt like they, they really cared about uh, me as a person and, and um, cared about my family, always asked about my people. And that was big to me. So and I was like, I wanted to, I wanted to do something different, get out of Colorado. I lived in Colorado my whole life, so it's like, I mean, this is a good time for me to experience something different. So you can't get much more different than in Alaska, for real. So I, uh, I, I committed to to Alaska Anchorage, um, and yeah, yeah. What was Alaska Anchorage, man? What? How? That's crazy, because it's like the University of Alaska, but. I guess I guess it, the code's the same, but what was like the biggest difference from going from uh, you know Colorado to Alaska? Man, biggest difference. I'd say um, it is pretty similar. I feel like Alaska or where I am in Anchorage, it's kind of like it's kind of like a mountain town in Colorado. Um, it's a good amount of people. It's a decent. It's a decent city. It's like a little Denver for real, but. Uh, the biggest difference was just just being so far away from from what I know. Like I'm I'm deep. Like I'm past Canada. I'm like <laughs> I'm 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 up here. <laughs> so that hold, was hold that hold that thought because I want you. We're gonna talk about being past Canada. Yeah. Hold that thought. I want yeah. you to bring that up again. Yeah. How important? Because I'm listening. You know, I'm listening to you, and you're talking about you know what it takes to be a, a great basketball player and get better. And the word that keeps popping into my head is sacrifice. Sacrifice. Yeah. You've made a lot of sacrifices um, on this journey, you know, to, to, to being great, you know, and um, like I said earlier, I'm extremely proud of you. Can you talk about the, in the, the impact of sacrifice and why it's important? Cause you're going from Colorado to Alaska. That's mm -hmm. a sacrifice. Yeah. You can't just, drive home for Thanksgiving or fly home. You know what I mean? You can't just, all right, I want to go home real quick. Like you could when you was at, you know, your previous school. Right. This right. is farther, but it's a yeah. sacrifice for you to grow as a, as a person, as a, as an athlete, you know, individual, you know, all that. Yeah. Talk about just sacrifice. 
Yeah. So it's, I feel like as an athlete, as you know, like you've been, you've been sacrificing your whole life. Um, like you, like growing up, like you didn't want to go to this training session, but you got to go. Like you want to, you want to kick it with your friends or, or just like, there's just been a lot of different things leading up to, to what you want to, to what you want to accomplish. Like nothing, nothing easy in, in life comes without sacrificing some things. So, um, for me, I like, I was like, I, I gotta, I gotta do this. I gotta do this for me. I mean, it, it, like you said, I gotta grow it. This is going to help me grow as a, as a person, as a basketball player. And, and it's just, you just got to sacrifice some things. And it's, it's different too. Cause, um, I feel like oftentimes sacrifice, it's not all, it's not just one-sided. Like my, my parents and my family, they're, they're sacrificing too. Cause like, mom, I can't, like my mom can't see me, you know, and, and that's, that's my dog, but like she, she can't, she can't see me. So she's sacrificing time that, that, um, that she would be able to, to, to see me so that I could, that I could live out my dream of playing college basketball. So sacrifice is a, is a big, that's a big word. And I feel like it's a, it's a word that, um, if you really want to do this, do this thing, like you gotta, you gotta believe it and you gotta lock in on it. That's, that's real. Man. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a huge sacrifice, but it's, you know, like you said, the chips will fall in place and, and, and it pays yep. off. Um, and you also, you create a, a new, a new path for others. I don't think I've ever seen anybody, um, you know, take that leap and, and go to a, a school like the University of Alaska. So you've opened the door now for all of us, you know what I mean? To, to experience something new um, as we watch you ball out. So, you know, Sorry. shout out to you for that. Appreciate that. Yep. On this on this journey, you know, you 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 ran into some adversity. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure. You, ran, you ran into some adversity, and um, yeah. this is why I call you resilient. You want to talk about that? Yeah. Yep. So uh, last year, or yeah, started last year, um, twenty twenty. I I got up here about late August, and um, we were at a just our our like legit the first open gym like the team as a team our first open gym and we played a game um was feeling good and then uh we're checking up for the next game and uh i just i like went to my knees and then the next thing i know i'm i'm on the ground and i'm looking up and one of my teammates my roommate now he uh he's looking over me and is like 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 you like like are you good like trying to help me up and i'm like what are you talking about and then I got up and like everybody's looking at me all crazy because I mean nobody really knows each other. This is the first time we've really we ran with each other, we really played. And um I'm I'm looking around like like looking at me so crazy, like what are you talking about? And they're like, bro, like you just you just just collapsed. And I'm like, no, I didn't, like I didn't, I didn't do that. I'm I'm cool. So I, I sat out a game and I played the rest of that day which my mom was not happy about. And then the next day I played and then um, my people were finally like, like, you need to, you need to go get checked out. Like this isn't, this isn't some normal stuff. So I went to our uh, student health center. I got a couple of tests done. They came back abnormal. Um, and then I had to go to a cardiologist, get some more tests done. Um, and like for like a, a few more weeks after that, it was just like test, test, test. And then um, I got the, I know all the dates, like they just ingrained in my head. Like, so September 25th, 2020, I was diagnosed with a, uh, a heart condition I was born with. So it's, it's crazy because I've, I've been athletic. I've been doing everything, playing, run, doing a whole bunch of sports, just, just being an active kid my whole life. And then um, I got hit with that news that day that I, I had a heart condition and, and they need to do open heart surgery on me. Um, yeah. So in, next month, late October, I, I went back home to Colorado and, uh, I got my, my heart surgery done at, um, at the children's hospital out there in Aurora. So you went through that, man, that's a, 
and, and pff, I'm, I'm, I'm speechless right now. You went through that. Um, how was how, how was that on you? Just as a person, as an athlete, you know, how, how was that? Yeah, I mean, um, I'd say the toughest part for me was that day when I got the, the call from the doctor saying I was I was going to have to get open heart surgery. Like, because I can, I'm cool with like, like maybe like doctor calling me saying like, yeah, you, 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 you broke your ankle, like you broke your wrist. But this is something that that's, that's internal that I, I didn't cause myself. So I'm, I'm like. I'm questioning, I'm, I'm questioning God. I'm like, why, like, why is this happening to me? Like, I feel like I'm, I'm a good dude. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I've done the right things. And then like something like this just pops up on me. So I'm, I'm, I just broke down. I'm like, dang, like, like what, like what's happening. And um, so that was the tough, that was the toughest part for me. And then uh, I, I leading up to the surgery, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't look up any, like information on it. Cause I was like, if I look up some stuff on this, I'm gonna freak myself out and I'm gonna be tripping. So I was just like, I was cool. I was just, just, just taking my mind off, off everything. Just, and, um, it was really hard on, it was really, really hard on my parents. Um, because you could tell it, they, they felt like it was their fault in a way, you know, mm -hmm. because they, they're the ones who, who birthed me. But that's one thing I was like, like he, there was nothing any of us could have done to to prevent this or or stop this from happening, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. So that was it was really hard on it was really hard on them. And then uh, yeah, the surgery day came and, and yeah. <laughs> so you you get the call, the doctor tells you you gotta you gotta have open heart surgery. So from the moment you get the call and the doctor says you have to have open heart surgery to. Now you're back playing basketball again. Did you ever think you would be playing basketball again? Man, I uh no, no, because there were there were talk there were thoughts in my mind like because one of the one of the options was you can you can not have the surgery, but you just can't be active again. And I'm like, there's no way I'm doing that because this is this is this is me, like this is my whole life. Um so I was like, there's no chance of that happening. And uh this after the surgery like there were definitely moments where i was like like this is like, this just sucks like i can't i can't i can't i can't handle this i can't i can't do it but um that's when i just i just relied on my 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 faith in god and just in just my faith in in my the people around me like i got to i got to do this for them cuz they're They've done so much for me and I just can't, I can't let this change the the course of where I want my life to go. So that was, that's how I, that's how I got through that for sure. Walk by faith and not by sight. That's crazy. You say that I got a, I got that tatted on, on my arm. <laughs> they just popped in my head. Walk by faith and not by sight because initially you hearing that, you know, you gotta get you get the call again. You get the call. You gotta have open heart surgery. You know, I'm sure your family looking at you. They seeing everything. You know, you lose a lot of weight when you have surgery and things like that. So clearly, it's not looking good. But but if you have that faith, yeah, you know what I mean. It, yep. It's gonna take you a long way. Yeah, yeah. You have faith that you was gonna return back to that court. Yep, yep. I mean, then that kept telling. I was like, <laughs> I was like. Like God's already, he's already got, he's already got this figured out. Like it's, it's good. I just gotta, I just gotta get through it. Like he's, he's already got everything in place. I just gotta keep walking, walking in, in the path that he has set for me. So that's, that's all. That's everything was. That's why I, I was, I was good. I was calm. I was just like, like he's, he's got it all. He's got it. He's got it all in his, in his control, all in his hands. So there's nothing I gotta worry about. Facts. What's one word that you would use to describe going from collapsing on the basketball floor, having open heart surgery, to now you've returned to basketball? What's one word? Man. 
I'm a, I'm gonna I'm just I'm still yours. Just just resiliency, just being resilient, just just bending and not breaking. You know, you just gotta you just gotta bend and not break. Cause if you break, you just you done. You just gotta you gotta adapt and and move on. That's 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 one thing. That's one thing for me. Facts and your your impact. You know, we talk a lot about basketball because um, that's what you do. But your impact is way bigger than basketball. And, you know, from the people who are going to see this, definitely going to get inspired. But you're also inspiring, you know, the community, the state. You know, I, I saw, you know, you had um, it was like a marathon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We did a we did a, a walk. Yeah. Um, so right before I came back to school, I uh, we did a it's called a walk for um, one in 100. So one in 100 uh, babies are born with a with a heart defect. Um, and I was, I was one of those, I was one of those babies. So, um, my, it was all my mom, my mom's doing, she put everything together and, uh, it was, it was a, it was a really, it was a really cool thing. So we worked with the adult congenital heart association and, um, we raised, we raised money to, to, uh, benefit that. And it was, it was a really, it was a really cool thing. And I, I just appreciate the people who, who, uh, took the time to, to come out and support and donate and, that was that was awesome. It was really incredible because there's a lot of there's a lot of um, people and families who are who aren't as as fortunate as as uh, me and mine. So um, it's it's really a blessing to help those those people out. So and and we'll, I think we're we're definitely gonna put put it on next year and uh, it, hopefully we can get it a little bit bigger and and, and keep growing. So oh yeah, definitely we will. Um, it's a great cause and I love it and shout out to moms and the family um, and, you know shout out to you for raising that awareness because you know even like a lot of people just don't know you never know what somebody's been through you know what I mean yeah, exactly. you never know. and it's for the fact that you said it's it's not visible like a you know like a wrist it's it's not visible it's it's internal so you can't see um, yeah so it's it's easy to hide. So shout out to you for bringing awareness to that, and shout out to the family. I appreciate that. Yeah, like so I um I'm redshirt in this season. I I tore I actually tore my Achilles in April of uh, this past year, 2021. And like you said, like I saw that I saw that happen. You know, like I saw myself tore tear my Achilles, but this like. <laughs> I didn't have no x-ray or, or anything on me to see what was going on. So it was, it was different. It was very different. Man, you know, as the journey continues, you know, dealing with, dealing with setbacks and adversities, how do you keep your mind sharp? Um, how do you use these, you know, to your advantage? Like talk about that in your mindset. Yeah. So um, mindset has been, has been one of the things I've I've had to I've really I've had to to, to hone in on um because it's really easy to let your let your mind just kind of wander and 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 go to go to different different lengths and different places and kind of feel bad for yourself but I mean at times it's good to it's good to feel sorry for yourself but you gotta you gotta you gotta get up and and get over it you know what I'm saying because there's there's not too, there's no, nobody's really feeling sorry for you so I, uh, and the, the heart surgery that completely changed my perspective on, on life and everything. Cause, um, like I could have, I could have died. Like it was a, there was a very strong chance. I, I could have, I, I could not be sitting here today. So I was like, if I can, if I can make it through that and, and, and get through that and, and I'm and, and still, and still stand strong, like I can, I can push through just about anything. So, um, Mentally, it's just, it's really just really appreciating, appreciating life and appreciating the people around you and, and just loving them and, and just trying to, and just pouring, pouring, pouring into other people because you, like you said, you never know what somebody else is going through. So you can't, you can't feel sorry for yourself. You know? Facts, facts, man, that's, that's powerful. If you could... Do you have like a a favorite quote or like a mantra that you that you live by? Um, I know you got walk by faith, not by sight, tatted. But if there's anything like something, a quote your dad, a man of 
great knowledge and wisdom um share with you like anything like what is a quote that you live by so um me my my dad and my sister we all have um a tattoo on our on our forearms right here it says Romans 8 and 28 and and that's something I I uh I live by and and I'll see a short version like it just says all things work together for good so you just gotta like all things are are just are just working together and I I I I tell myself that a lot because I mean, there's a lot of things in life, like life throws you cur curveballs and stuff, and and it's hard to it's hard to really to really snag and and um and try and justify everything. But uh like I, like every all things work together for good. Like you just gotta I feel like I, I, I tell myself to to just just gotta keep pushing, gotta keep moving, because um trouble trouble doesn't last always. You just gotta gotta keep moving forward. And that's that's a big thing that I uh, that I tell myself. Just keep keep moving, keep pushing. What's what's one piece of advice you would give to younger Tyson? Let's say senior year in high school, Tyson. What's one piece of advice you would give him? One piece of advice I give my my younger self. Um, <laughs> I I really I tell myself to. Um, to not like just to I first tell myself to, to work harder. Tell myself to work harder. And uh and then I I tell I tell myself to like just let just let just let life life come to you. You can't you can't control anything. And at times I my yourself I, I wanted everything like right away. I wanted offers. I wanted I wanted this I wanted that I wanted this but um you can't always you just gotta you just gotta control what you can control and and that's one thing i i didn't i didn't i didn't let myself let myself do i didn't i didn't let myself control what i what i could control i just wanted everything just just i was yeah right so away <laughs> right away right away that's what i tell myself your coach had um your basketball coach at Alaska, what's the most valuable thing or valuable lesson that he's taught you? Most valuable lesson that he's taught me. Um, I'd say uh, the most valuable thing he's taught me, he's taught me a lot about, about communication and, and just being just over communicate. Like, cause that like oftentimes um, people aren't on the same page. So you gotta, especially as at the point guard position, you gotta um, you gotta over communicate because you're you're the you're the quarterback of the team. So um, that's the biggest thing he's taught me, and that's that's something I I, I definitely um, need to continue working on is 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 communication just in all aspects of life, um, and then also just um, just being able to to like sit down face to face and and really just have a like ha have a conversation with somebody like how how far that can go um and man like we 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 have we have good conversations all the time and and, and they might not always be what i want to hear or um but like it's it's good to to sit down and and look somebody in the eye and and really and and just talk and have a have a have a conversation maybe and whether that just be like just asking somebody about their day, like like little things, just always go a long way. So that's one thing I'd say. Um, Dave, he's taught me a bunch is is being a, a better communicator. Yeah, communication is key. Over communicating is key too, especially in the world we live in. You know, yeah. you might read a message wrong. You're like, oh, for real? <laughs> not knowing the not knowing the interpretation of the like, oh, you're a bit. Yeah, thanks. Man. Because somebody that throw an LOL on it, it just sound way harsher. <laughs> so you know that shout out to coach for that yeah. you know communication what do you want the world to know about the university of alaska the university of alaska and the university of alaska's basketball team yeah so um well, there's a lot of misconceptions about alaska i mean one of the things i uh, I asked them. I was like, that was one of my one of my first questions. I was like, 
is there any is there any like is there any black people up there like i just i just didn't know i just didn't know what it if there was or like what it was looking like and uh and they're like in alaska it actually has the most diverse high school in all of the united states so it's a it's a very diverse place it's a it's a it's a real it's a tight knit city um and i mean there's a it's a it's a it's an awesome place to be like there's a lot to there's a good amount to do and and I like guess it's just a beautiful, beautiful place. Like I'll, I'll wake up and look outside my window. I might see just like a moose just walking down the street or something like that. And you look up and you see the mountains and it's it's really incredible. And with the University of Alaska Anchorage, like the basketball program, I'd say um we got we got some we got a we got some really good stuff here. We got a um one of the best arenas in in division two and um it's a it's a it's a lot nicer than a good amount of division one one schools and it's just like the facilities are, are top notch and it's really it's really an awesome um experience being able to walk in walk into our facility every day and 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 just be here and just get the get the type of um type of opportunity that that I have. It's it's really it's really a blessing. So that's what I have to say about that. What's the What's the team's like mantra? What's y'all's what's y'all's mantra? What's y'all's uh so they always say uh T W W D and it's just it's just this what we do. Like it's just it's the, it's it's at that. <laughs> That's they say that at like after every every text message, it's just this is what we do. So this is, go go in on that real quick. Talk what is, what is it that y'all what is it that y'all do? Like this is your time to brag. Like we <laughs> representing right now. This is yeah. what we do. We, we, what do y'all uh, stand for? What do y'all do? We we our, our team. We we pride ourselves on on playing like a team brand of basketball. Um, and that's that's something I I really like. Everybody everybody gets a touch and and everybody like the ball moves. Like I feel like a lot of times when the ball moves the defense moves and then you get, you get better opportunities. So that's one thing. And it's really like, it's a completely fan. It's a complete family atmosphere. Like it's the, the closest knit team I've ever been on in my entire life. Um, and just like we, everybody's cool with each other. Everybody hangs out with each other. But when, when we need to, when we need to get on each other and, 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 and let somebody know, like, like, like you got to go, like you're like you're bullshit right now. Like, like we, it's it's that type of it's that type of family atmosphere. So, and um, yeah, it's, it's that's what's really cool about it. Um, it's just how how tight knit of a group we are, and and um, yeah. No, that's dope. That's dope. What's the what's the most important thing that your journey to Alaska has taught you? I think the most important thing about my journey to Alaska is taught me just that, like, I can, I can do this, you know, like I can, I can do stuff. I can do stuff on my own. I can, I can, I can figure, I can just like figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I can, I can, it's like, it's cool. Like things may, the chips may be down, but like, I'll figure it out, you know? And, and that's, that's one thing that coming here has taught me because I'm like so far from home. Um, and it's like at times, like when I was at Pueblo, I could have just like drove back hour and fifteen minutes back home and been and just been at the crib, but I can't do that now. So it's, it's it it teaches you to grow up. I feel like um, I feel like that's that's what's good about. I feel like it's always good for for people to 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 go out and experience new things because you 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 there's different opportunities out there and you gotta it teaches you to grow up and and learn. It's like trial and error a little bit. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. You know, this is this is the Cage Breaker show. Um, so I have to ask you, this is a two-part question. Um, you know, this is a two-part question based off you. Are you a cage breaker? And what is a cage or cages that you've broken out of? Yeah, I definitely am a cage breaker. And um my the cage that I've I've broken out of is um there's a there's a chance for me that I, I wasn't gonna make it. Uh I wasn't I wasn't gonna I had to go into the under the knife and and um and just really really fight to get to get 
back to where I was with fighting back from uh, from heart surgery and, and playing and playing, doing well. And then tearing my Achilles three months after that and, and getting out of that and, and fighting and fighting. And, and here I am, here I am now, 10 months later, and I'm, I'm still standing. So I'm definitely, a, definitely a cage breaker. I agree. I agree. You know, you, you were a cage breaker for sure. You're not letting anybody put limits on you, um, you know, or dictate anything. So you for sure are a cage breaker. Um, and you're going to continue to break out of cages, you know, just, yeah. you know, even right now, just more things, you know, you're going to overcome. Um, so for sure, you're a cage breaker. I have to ask you, man, you know, with all the adversity you faced, all the cages that you've broken out of, do you have like a, a role model or like a, a, a muse, like somebody, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a, I have a, a, a couple different role models and people I, uh, people I look up to. Um, one is, is my, my, my pops. I, I talk to him about a lot of different things. Um, just especially when it comes to, to basketball and, and life for sure. And then, um, my big brother and, and big sister as well. They, I look up to them because they, they know me more than they know me better than than anybody else. So um, I talk to them at, to, for advice, and then especially my my mom. She 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 gives me advice that I can't hear from my dad. That in that he can't he can't tell me. So those those four they're they're the they're they're my people, and they they definitely hold me down, and and I love and and. Um, respect them more than more than life itself so definitely um you know four truly amazing people you know um big bro sis moms and pops um are are, are truly amazing um and you definitely are a reflection of, of them if in in if they can describe you in three words what would they say um <laughs> it'd probably be different from from person to person but i'd say uh they probably say say goofy i just i mean i like to i like to make people like to make people feel good and and um and i feel like i'm a person that 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 people people like to like to be around um uh, and i say just caring i'm a very very caring person um and then i'd say uh driven and, and passionate i just i've i've been i've been i feel like i could have could have quit a, a bunch of times but it's just it's just not in the cards for me so not at all those words not at all keep going you know it's a lot of you know young people out here um it's about inspiring the young people or old people, whoever, you know, inspiration is what it's all about. What's one piece of advice you would give to um, a young person out there who, who wants to, who wants to make it, who wants to make it to the next level? Mm -hmm. um, one thing, one, one uh, piece of advice I'd give them is uh, like, you're going to, you're going to face adversity. Like, Nothing, nothing in life that you really want is gonna come easy. So once that adversity comes, embrace it. Embrace the adversity, and and because you know, you know, you can, you can, you can defeat it. Because I mean, it's just, it's just a little like nothing. Nothing is too big that you can't overcome. So when adversity strikes, embrace that and and beat it and beat it. That's what I tell tell a, a younger person. And that's that's in life, and that's advice you can use in life and on the court. So you just yeah. you answered the next question too. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> shout out to you for that. And um, you know, is is there anything else you want to share with the people, man? You know. No, nah, I just uh, like I just I just really I really respect respect what you're doing and respect you, and I uh, I appreciate you having me, man. This was this was awesome. It's a it's always good just just getting a little break from from everything and, and really just having a conversation like that's that's really big stuff. So I really appreciate you having me on the show. No, no doubt, man. Um, I, I appreciate you. And again, this was an honor for me. Um, I do want to ask one more question. You know, we, we we spoke a lot about, you know, basketball and 
um, you know, our inspirations and resilience and, and things like that. But I, I do want to ask you, man, how has just being an athlete made you a better person? Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's made me who I am today. I feel like team sports is the, is the best thing that you can do as to, to help somebody grow as a person. Cause everything that happens in a, in a sports setting, like you can, you can correlate that into life in a way. Like you got to talk, you got to talk about teamwork, um, problem solving. You got to talk about critical thinking, just like everything kind of lines up. So um, basketball and just sports period. Like I fast my highest highs and my lowest lows playing basketball and in sports period. And, um, when it comes to life, I've had, I've had very high highs and low lows. So it's, it's very, they, they work hand in hand. So, um, yeah, sports and, and, and basketball really, I mean, sports and sports and life go hand in hand. So I, 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 I think it's a it's a very vital thing to to have um, to have your have have kids and I'm I'm grateful that my parents put me in in sports um, from the time that I could do anything so because it's it's made me who I am. Facts, man, and you a great you know a great young man, a great person, um, you know, and 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 you're doing big things, and you know we we definitely gonna be watching, supporting. Um, and just being a part of this journey, um, the, ups, the downs and, you know, everything else, graduation, all that, you know, you, you're definitely doing big things, destined for greatness. Um, already proud of you regardless, but keep it going. Um, and thank you for coming on the show, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. For sure. Appreciate it. And shout out to, shout out to coach Gilbert and the family. Great, <laughs> yes, people. Yep. Great people. Um, and, and there we have it. Um, cage breakers. We out here. So proud of me. It's so proud of me. It's so proud of me. Cage breaker. Cage breaker.